so this document is written during a time of active military hostility and it clearly indicates right at the very beginning that what's most important is the successful prosecution of the war. Uh, and then let's look at the verb there, requires. So this is being presented as if there's no choice, right? This is one way that you justify the actions that you take by making it seem as if it's inevitable. It's not actually a decision. This isn't something where Franklin Delano Roosevelt decided he would do this, he's required to do it, right? So there are rhetorical tricks built into even the most innocuous, most bureaucratic, most official looking document. Okay, whereas the successful prosecution of the war requires every possible precaution, right? Every, right? So uh, the idea here is uh, that no possibility is going to be left out. Right? We want to be comprehensive. We want to make the best possible effort against espionage and against sabotage. Okay, so this tells us what the fear is. What is the risk? Espionage and sabotage. So there's a concern uh, not about enemies overseas, not about soldiers in uniforms who will attack us, not about the pilots who were flying the Japanese planes that bombed Pearl Harbor. The concern here is about people inside, members of the body politic, who will commit espionage and sabotage, right? What uh, does this say? Now, therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me as President of the United States and Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy. Now, what's not said here is vested in me under the Constitution, right? So this is an invocation of legal authority. And what does Franklin Delano Roosevelt do with that authority? He's saying, I have this authority. Why does he have it? Because he's president and commander-in-chief. But look at what he does in that sentence. I hereby authorize and direct the Secretary of War and the military commanders whom he may from time to time designate. So FDR is giving up his power. He's saying, OK, I have this power. But I'm not going to actually use it. I'm going to give it to other people to use. Okay, To do what? whenever he or any designated commander deems such action necessary or desirable to prescribe military areas in such places and of such extent as he or the appropriate military commander may determine from which any or all persons may be excluded. That's the crucial language. So what he's saying is now the military has my authority and what they have authority to do is prescribe military areas. That just means designate, name, choose, select, right? But he's uh, picked a word that's more formal and more neutral. From which any or all persons may be excluded. Now, what's interesting is they don't exclude all persons. They actually don't exclude any. They exclude a specific group selected by ancestry blood by immutable characteristics, not who they are, not uh, what they decided for themselves, not their politics, but skin color, the texture of hair, the shape of eye, the color of skin, uh, and that's what ultimately was decided.